Okay, the last organic family of our organic unit is amides. You will see the general formula here, RCONH2 or RCONH R primed, RCON R primed, R double primed. Common to all three of these is the CON. And you'll see here that the carbon is double bonded to an oxygen and single bonded to a nitrogen. We refer to this link as the amide linkage. It's going to look familiar to you, almost like an ester. An ester has an oxygen here instead of a nitrogen. And there are lots of similarities, particularly with the condensation reactions used to produce both of those functional groups. Okay, so I've rewritten these so that you can practice. So what I'm asking you to do now is draw this functional group. Attach an R group to the carbon and then figure out the rest of it. Check in with the video when you've done that for all three of these general formulas. Okay, so hopefully you've set up the amide linkage in each of these general formulas. And you'll notice that in the case of the primary amine that we have two hydrogens bonded to the nitrogen. And in the case of the secondary amine, that there is only one hydrogen. And in the case of the tertiary amine, no hydrogens are bonded to the nitrogen. So I've got a bit of a table structured underneath here. Can the primary amine hydrogen bond with itself? Recall that there are a lone pair of electrons on the nitrogen here and two lone pairs on the oxygen. So would those electronegative atoms be able to attract hydrogens directly bonded to nitrogen in an adjacent molecule? Absolutely, they would be able to. So as long as we have the NH bond present at least once, then it will be able to hydrogen bond with itself. You'll notice because there are two hydrogens directly bonded to nitrogen, we have an increased capacity for hydrogen bonding in this primary amide. We see the same concept happening in the secondary amide because there is a hydrogen present, but this time only one bonded directly to a nitrogen. And then you'll notice in the tertiary amide that there are no nitrogen-hydrogen bonds. And so no, this will not be able to hydrogen bond with itself. All three amides though do have electronegative atoms that can form hydrogen bond links with water molecules. And so yes, they're all able to hydrogen bond with water. So focusing on their ability to hydrogen bond with themselves, how would you rank the boiling points? So which one, the primary, secondary, or tertiary would be highest? Make a decision, jot it down, and then check in. So hopefully you were thinking that the primary am amide able to hydrogen bond with itself in a double capacity would have the highest boiling point, and that would drop down then to the tertiary with the lowest boiling point. Regarding solubility, of course that relates to its ability to hydrogen bond with water. And so the primary and secondary, the, the small molecules, can be soluble in water. But remember that as soon as those R groups are increasing, right, we are, as always, decreasing the solubility because the nonpolar regions are getting larger. So that decreases the solubility in water. For the tertiary amines, they don't, or they do have the ability to hydrogen bond with water, but there are three hydrocarbon groups there. So we will see these be much less soluble in water. Okay, naming of the amides. It's all the name of an amide is all one word. So we will see the suffix amide and groups that are attached to the nitrogen 
will have capital N out in front. And we'll sequence those alphabetically if there are two of them. So looking at example A, just like we did with esters, we focus on that carboxyl carbon. And then we number away from the single bonded nitrogen. Monkeys eat, E stands for eth, and so we think of ethane, but we drop the E. So ethanamide. Now, what's bonded to the nitrogen? Oh, it's a primary amide. There's only hydrogens, and so we don't need to indicate any R groups attached to the nitrogen. So for primary amides, you will just see the parent hydrocarbon from the carboxylic acid with the amide ending. So now checking out part B, we have a secondary amide. Locate the carboxyl carbon and number away from the single bonded oxygen. Build the root, monkeys eat peel, P stands for prop, we think of propane, drop the E and add amide, the suffix. Now what's attached to the nitrogen? A hydrogen and this methyl group. So we indicate with a capital N and methyl propanamide. Moving on to examples C and D. Try those yourself and then check in with the video. Example C, you'll see that the carboxyl carbon is carbon number one. We number away from the nitrogen and find two carbons. There's our ethanamide. And then we have N ethyl and methyl. Notice E comes before M. And finally, in example D, monkeys eat peeled, propanamide with an N butyl and methyl. And you'll see again the B comes before the M. Okay, that's it for naming the amides. Final part of the lesson here are the condensation reactions that form amides. And hopefully you'll find these fairly similar to what you have done with esters. Okay, so in example A, we start with a carboxylic acid and ammonia. So I realize ammonia is an inorganic molecule. There's no carbon there. And yet we're going to be, going to be able to do a reaction here to form a primary amide releasing water. So I've done a specific example. You'll see that I've boxed out the OH from the carboxyl group and one of the H's from ammonia. So can you figure out what's left as a byproduct? Hopefully you recognize the water there. And now it becomes just like when you drew the ester molecule. So we copy over the parent of that carboxylic acid, do our C double bond O, and now instead of bonding to this oxygen here, we're going to come over and attach to the nitrogen. And so there's a nitrogen in place. Now with only hydrogens coming off of this nitrogen, in a line structure, I don't need to show the H's. And so that's it for the structure. We formed a primary amide. Now in example B, or is the second reaction here, again it's a carboxylic acid, but now a primary amine. You'll see that these react in a condensation reaction to form a secondary amide releasing water. So I've given you an example here showing the carboxyl group and one of the hydrogens right, being grouped with the OH from the carboxyl group. You'll notice there's still an R group on this nitrogen. And so you can go ahead and draw your, your product and check in with the video. Okay, so you'll see that I copied these three carbons as they are here, and then after removing water, linked to the nitrogen. What else is attached to the nitrogen? Well, there's a hydrogen, which I don't show in the line structure, as well as a methyl group. And so using the line or skeletal formula notation, there's a CH3 at the end here. Okay, example C, or reaction C. You'll see we have a carboxylic acid and a secondary amine, reacting to form a tertiary amide. And so here's an, another example for you to go ahead and predict products. So you'll see that water is released again and we have the amide linkage forming. Okay, 
Last reaction here, carboxylic acid and a tertiary amine. So I have written no reaction here, and if you look at the example that I've drawn out, recognizing that there are CH3 groups at the end of each of these line segments, we'll realize that there is no hydrogen directly bonded to the nitrogen. And so we're trying to eliminate water as we condense these molecules, and yet there is no H to form it. And so because of that, there's no reaction when a carboxylic acid and a tertiary amine combine.